a black man, New Jersey, shot and paralyzed after a traffic stop. Let's put up his picture, okay? 29 years of age, he was shot by Trenton, New Jersey police officers in civilian clothing last month after simply trying to get an iced tea from a car outside of his home. I kid you not, his name is Jawan R. Henderson. He is now in the middle of a lawsuit against the officers for paralyzing him from the chest down. Alleging excessive force, negligence, and racial profiling. This is such a sad story. Let me give you some background to what happened to Mr. Henderson. The encounter, which occurred soon after midnight on February 12th, was described as two individuals in mask and dark clothing approaching Henderson in an unmarked vehicle, boxing in the Saturn Ion that was double parked in front of his home as Henderson attempted to grab his drink. After stepping out of the car, the masked individuals began yelling, which prompted Mr. Henderson to call for help on his phone. From one moment to the next, one of the officers smashed the driver's side window. Remember, they are in mask and shot Henderson four times. The city of Trenton, the director of Trenton police, Steve E. Wilson. Let's put up a picture of Steve. There he is. Steve E. Wilson and the four officers on the scene, only identified by their initials, they're hiding, were those named as the defendants. Those four officers were placed on administrative leave according to a county prosecutor statement from last month. Per the outlet, the prosecutor's office said on Friday that they are still seeking to arraign Henderson for what? Resisting arrest and obstruction, despite causing him to be paralyzed. That's just sick, isn't it? It is still unknown as to what the identities of the plain clothed officers are, as well as their objective of cruising around Trenton that night. Once again, put up a picture of Mr. Wilson. This is the picture that we do have, okay? We have his picture. We don't have the picture of the other officers. Now. Mr. Henderson has been paralyzed. There is no evidence, there is no evidence that he was the target of anything, that he committed some crime. He has not been charged with any other crime. They charge him with resisting, resisting arrest, he's paralyzed. This system is still planning to prosecute him. This is the insanity we're talking about, systemic, by design, cultural. Adversarial to common sense and progress. Not looking at the matter for what the matter is, but looking at it based on their own privilege, their power, authority, manipulation and corruption. That is what you're seeing being played out. This man is paralyzed from the chest down because he was grabbing a damn iced tea out of his vehicle. All of these people in charge from the district attorney, to the state AG, to the police director, the chief, and everyone in between. They're part of a system here. You mean to tell me not one of you is willing to step up and say, listen, all of y'all got it wrong. Can one of y'all have a press conference and say, listen, I disagree with the other agencies involved here. One of you, not one of you. Adrian, thoughts here. You know, again, this just seems to be something that we're seeing too often the case. It's this implicit notion that the black body, particularly the male black body is criminal. And thus the first response should be to kill it, to shoot it, to use lethal and deadly force as opposed to let me simply see what the situation is. And it's just, it really reinforces the notion that White people are afforded with the privilege, the thought that you are not inherently dangerous, the thought that you carry innocence, that you can't be that much of a harm. And we should be giving this to all people and not assume that all individuals, especially based on their melanin count, means that they are lethal just in breathing. This is just, it's more of the same. And it's going to continue to happen until we have a uniform policy in America as it relates to policing. 
Right now, we are depending on local jurisdictions. We're depending on counties and states to pass laws in order to hold individuals accountable. We're hoping that progressive run for office in particular fields of law enforcement, district attorney, AG, state's attorney, etc. So that they can apply the laws in equity and fairly. But the issue will remain if we do not have a massive uniform federal policy. For example, the George Floyd Policing and Accountability Act. Well, at least that act would have created an opportunity for us to know who these officers are. We would also have access to their record, knowing what complaints have been filed against them and substantiated. They know your record, they know mine, they know records of those in the community around them, and community pays their salary. So they can see our record, but we cannot see theirs. Doesn't make much sense to me at all. So I have a proposal. And I submit this, I submit this in all authenticity. We keep talking about reform and it's great to get some new laws, but we have to include replacement. At this point, if we're not talking about a massive overhaul of what policing is in the United States and, and we're not talking about how to implement actual public safety strategies, we're missing the mark. Policing is not your public Safety agenda is one small part of the overall dynamic that leads you to public safety.